welcome new subscribers thank you subscribers for following sharing liking our videos we appreciate all your support you can follow chemistry on facebook instagram and twitter my name is Revan penelope stewart today i'm going to be talking about the akashic records i've never talked about the akashic records or working with the akashic records i don't think i could have uh, because I'm always doing a lot of journey work, a lot of path work, and a lot of meditation work, guided meditation. So, uh, I don't know if I talked about it now or not. I know I have shared some meditation experiences with you guys. But I'm going to talk about the Akashic Records, my experience, what I how I understand the Akashic Records. And then I'll talk about my little notes that I've gathered uh, research I have gathered to for to help you understand it as well. Uh, maybe you won't you won't understand my perspective, but there's some notes I've t taken that will probably clarify what I'm trying to share with you, if that makes sense. Okay, let's just jump into it. Uh, first of all, when I first had my Akashic record. Uh, experience. I asked my guys, I set my intentions, and I asked my guys to take me uh, to the Akashic Records because I wanted to learn about my past life, how some of these things in my past lives were affecting my life now, my gifts, my talents, my karmic debt, my ancestral patterns. I wanted to know all of that, and then I wanted to, too, uh, get, ready, get rid of any soul contracts that was creating blockages excuse me, in this life as well. So I set my intentions and I go in meditation and I come to this field, this open field, and there's trees on each side of this field. There's a row of trees on each side of this field. And so when I get here, this is my meditation experience. I want to be clear about that. This is my meditation experience going to the Akashic Records. All right? And so I asked my guys, I was like, hey, I asked to go to the Akashic Records. Like, why am I not there? Why am I in this open field in this forestry area? And they were like, you're here. And all of a sudden, these rows of trees and grass, the rows of trees turned into rows of scrolls and books. And the field turned into a floor. And my guides start to walk with me through the Akashic Records and explaining to me that the Akashic Records are basically a universal consciousness where everything is recorded from the beginning of time when it became conscious, when the universe became conscious, it began to record itself. All right, everything began to record itself. That's basically what the Akashic Records is. It is the consciousness of the universe, alive, recording every deed, emotion uh, the human has ever had. And also in the Akashic Records are parallel universes. But you'll learn about that a lot later as you move on with working with the Akashic Records because you can talk to your future self too. All right? So that kind of gets... That kind of get As you move on, that would make more sense. The parallel universes. But I'm not going to talk about that yet because some of us are not ready to move on with that just yet. Uh, but working with the Akashic Records is very easy. So I learned about my past life, my karmic debt, uh, really what the what the uh, Akashic Records is. So the Akashic Records are not just outside of you. The Akashic Records are you. It is a part of your archetype. It is every human consciousness archetype in, in, in the world that's being recorded here. All right? So it's a collective consciousness. It's a universal consciousness. So... That divine intellect is flowing through each and everything on this planet. Even the animals, they know when to eat. You know, even the insects, they even know when to uh, the pollinate flowers and things like that. There is a divine intellect flowing through 
everything. Everything is made of this divine intellect. And the thing about trusting, going in, doing the work, going to the Akasha work records is exploring your consciousness and your psychology. All right. I'm getting into metaphysics and quantum physics here. For those of you that understand spiritual science, this doesn't sound so far fetched to you because you understand spiritual science and that spiritual science starts with your mind. So we have not been really taught to unravel our minds, our archetypes and stuff in our minds. We have not been taught that. We, you know, they only say we use a small percentage of our minds. I am, I am convinced that we are creating unconsciously with our minds. All right. We are, we are participating in this reality. That's what we're doing with the other parts of our mind. We are creating. And what we are here to learn to do is learn how to create with this with this divine intellect learning how to imprint our conscious thoughts with this divine intellect that's what we're here to do and to evolve as we do it all right to evolve as we do it i hope i'm not losing you i hope this makes sense everything is consciousness even matter matter is not still it's, it's vibrating at a high frequency that you can't see so what's holding it together? It's consciousness. You know, it really question makes you question what is really real and what is really the human experience and how we define the human experience. And another thing, too, I wanted to bring up, you, you can't really see what's going on with the mind. You have to test it on levels. It's IQ. You know, you have a brain. Yeah, we know you have a brain. But the only way to test the mind and see uh, is understanding its comprehension and how much it knows you have to test the IQ so you really no one can really tell you what the mind really is it can't be touched it can't be felt but it can be observed through testing behaviors and emotions this is metaphysics all right and so the learn the more we learn about our psychology we will be able to tap into these archetypes so remembering that you are the akashic records and the only thing you have to do is set your intentions to travel there that's what the akashic records is it's a divine intellect i don't know how old this term akashic records really is but the divine, the universal mind, you know, spiritualists have always understood this divine consciousness. I think this Akashic Records term is 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 a little new, you know, using that term. But to me, it's a, just a divine intelligence where everything is recorded. And it has so many archetypes in it because it covers the uh the the consciousness of human existence. So you're gonna see a lot of archetypes in the Akashic records, depending on the consciousness of humanity at that time. All right. I can we can I talked about that in, in my Orisha video too, that there is a place in the universe that's oh where everything come from and people think nothing is happening there, but things are happening there relating to the uh evolution of consciousness. All right. There's conscious items that's coming from that part of the universe but that's another story all right but i kind of talked about that with my arish in my arisha video and and um talking about what what the physical realm is made out of it's made out of this universal sovereign that is consciousness all right but I, that's another story. I'm not going to get into that. But, but remember, you are the Akashic Records. You are tapped into that divine intellect. If you're speaking, you're talking, you're expressing yourself, you are a part of the divine consciousness. All right? These are things we've never been taught. You know, we've never been taught this kind of stuff to unravel the psychology of our minds and tap into the spiritual realm. Everything you see around you, it was born out of the mind. It was born out of imagination. So, two, we having to trust what we're picking up in meditation through our imagery and imagination.
Imagination is more than what you think it is. So, and we haven't been really taught to really trust what we pick up in our imagination when it comes to tapping into meditation and things of that sort. All right. I hope that makes sense. You can also use, I use these tarot cards, tarot, tarot cards, uh, the Akashic Tarot, because I talked about these. I may have did a review on them. These are really good cards. They're a lot different from the regular tarot, even though some of the symbolism and meaning is a lot like the same. For instance, the roses here represents emotions. All right, roses. So, you know, this would be a cups in the regular tarot. Uh, the forces here kind of represents wands. All right, wind. You know, that's what that represents. Uh, and the, what's the confusing things here? I'm, I get, you know, because you have the scrolls here. You know, that also, that because because when you see forces in this, that's where it gets kind of tricky to me with these cards. All right, uh, but like I said, they're kind of like with the tarot, and like the keys are more have a pinnacle feel to it, because this deal with the physical realm. All right, and forces to me. Uh, you know, maybe the scrolls is more like wands. They move sort of like wands. They do have to do with work. All right. And forces are more like wind. But it can be confusing reading some of these interpretations because you look at some of the scroll stuff and it look more like the forces. And that's why I said that. But these are really good cards to help you access the uh, Akashic Records. It is going to take some time for you to learn some of these cards because I'm always still learning with them. I have to slow down for the interpretation because some of the cards, uh, it's like a moving picture. You know, sometimes I don't have to look at the meaning of the card. I can just look at the cards and the cards tell a story like a moving picture. So these are very helpful cards, but take your time uh, tapping into them. If there were other... If there were another type of Akashic reading cards, I would probably buy those. These are, I don't think uh, the person that created these quite perfected it, but it works. I did some really successful good reading with these cards, but they work. But if it was another uh, type of Akashic cards, I would probably buy those. Uh, but you can also tap into the Akashic records, which are regular tarot cards. If you've been reading tarot, regular tarot for a while. Uh, you can tap into the Akashic Records, do Akashic Records reading with those cards as well. All right. But these are easy ways for you to tap into the Akashic Records. Remember, everything is consciousness. Everything is consciousness. And that's to keep it simple. So I'm going to go over some of my little notes. I'm going to get ready to wrap up this video. And I'm just going to go over some of my notes that will help clarify thing uh clarify the akashic records about the things i just talked about okay so let me just dive in and look at my notes on the akashic records okay akashic records can be equated to the universe supercomputer system it is this system that acts as a central storehouse of all information for every individual who has ever lived upon the earth the Akasha records contain every deed, word, feeling, thought, and intent that has ever occurred at any time in the history of the world. Much more than simply a memory storehouse, the Akasha records contain the entire history of every soul since the dawn of creation. It just records. I was watching this thing on TV where it, it, was, it was so cool to me, where I think it was a, a CSI show where this lady was uh, uh, was being assaulted in another room. And during the time she was being assaulted, somebody was making pottery. They were creating pottery during the time she was being killed or assaulted. And so when, once they found that out, 
they were able to play back the pottery that was being that was being created. Somebody was creating some type of vase or something. They were able to go back and play that vase or whatever like it was a record and hear what was going on during the time she was being assaulted. I thought that was so neat that they would go back. So everything around you is always being recorded. Something happened that was so emotionally intense that it'll play that 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 scenario will play itself over and over again in that area all right so yeah that happens that's that's happened in a few area i think david i kind of talked about that where people went to certain areas and they seen monuments there for like five minutes and then they looked around again and it was gone you know because that that place it, it was recorded in that area so some of these things can come back. That's why I say when you go into the Kashyyyk records, you'll see uh, the parallel universes. That's when you get into time and space and stuff too. It goes very deep once, the more you work with the Akashic records, the more information you can access. But again, this is about developing and knowing how to tap into your psychology. And the more you can successfully do that, you can travel to these other realms, all right? And that's what this is all about. That's what metaphysics, quantum physics is all about, is being able to master the mind and tap, tap into these archetypes because everything is consciousness. I hope that made sense to you, you guys. The Akashic records contain the entire history of every soul since the dawn of creation. These records connect each one of us to one another. They contain the stimulus for every archetypal symbol and mythic story which has ever deeply touched patterns of human behavior and experience so there's a lot of archetypes within the akashic records you know there's a lot of you like the your human existence so it runs very deep uh tapping into the akashic records some indicate the akashic records are similar to cosmic or collective consciousness the records have been referred to by different names including the cosmic mind the universal mind, the collective unconsciousness, or the collective subconscious. The collective subconscious gathers all thoughts from each subconscious mind, which can be read by other subconscious mind. We're all connected. It's like we're all on the same interface on this computer. We're all connected to the motherboard. That's basically what it is. We're all connected to this motherboard, but we haven't been taught to tap into the motherboard and retrieve information. Does that make sense? Because your mind is a computer tapped into the motherboard, which is divine intelligence. And so to be able to tap into the motherboard, you got to unravel the psychology and archetypes of your mind, of yourself, know more about you. And then you can tap into the motherboard. All right. I, I hope this is making sense to you. That's how I understand it. Um... It's believed by some that events recorded upon the Akasha can be ascertained or read in certain states of consciousness. Such states, such states of consciousness can be induced by states of sleep, weakness, illness, drugs, or meditation. So you can do the ayahuasca, you can do the mushrooms, you can do the cannabis, you can tap, uh, you can be in different states of meditation as well. Sometimes you don't need that. Sometimes you can go in a deep state of meditation. You can tap into the Akasha records, okay? One, I'll, or you can do it through through the cards, because everything is consciousness, all right? These are archetypes that, that's been made out for you. All you have to do is learn how to interpret them. Or you can do it through cards, too. Often, we unknowingly access these records on a daily basis. Whenever you have a flash of intuition or a hunch, you are receiving a glimpse into the divine wisdom contained within the Akashic records. The workers can be accessed through intuition, prayer, med meditation. The best way to gain self-access is to open up to our intuition and inner guidance intentionally. All right. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was insightful. It helped you understand the Akashic Records. I wanted to uh, talk about my experience and how I, I connect with the Akashic Records to, you know, Give you an experience and let you know it's not as hard as people make it out to be. Uh, setting your attentions and knowing more about yourself 
is the easiest way to tap into the Akashic Records. Because the more you understand your psychology, your behavior, your emotions, the more you're going to integrate with spirit. You know, I've talked about that several times. And how do we tap into it? Some of you are asking, well, how do you tap into it? You're made of that of the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records is you. All right, it's a part of your archetype. It's the collective human consciousness. And you have, you can tap into it, uh, it, you know, whenever you want to. But the thing about it is trusting what you're picking up in the Akashic Record because we have not been taught, again, we have not been taught to explore and really unravel the mysteries of our mind. You know, that's why psychology is very, uh, very, very important. So trusting what you're picking up, your imagination is more than what it is. Remember the whole world, what you're seeing now is made out of imagination. It was first born in the mind. It was thought of. It was created in the mind. And then it it, it formed into matter. Even matter is not still. It, it's even consciousness. You know, it's even consciousness because matter is you uh, moving at a very fast vibratory rate. You can't see it. It's on a higher frequency. Even you, you're made of consciousness. But I thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, thank you for subscribing, new subscribers. I hope you enjoy the channel. I would love to get your feedback on what you would like me to talk about. So, you know, if you found this uh, video interesting, this subject interesting, please drop some comments below. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.